wanted to once again update the technicals on the S&P 500 now that we have had another couple days here of bouncing around back and forth and there's a big event this Friday with Ben Bernanke speaking at the Jackson Hole Symposium. A lot of speculation that he might announce QE3 or something like that, which most would perceive as bullish for the equity markets. We won't get into that debate, but we are going to analyze the price action and just what's going on here and what the market might be trying to tell us. So, obviously, uh, you know, that first week in August, August 8th, we had that big drop with the credit downgrade and whatnot that took us down to 1100 on the S&P 500. We're looking at a 60-minute chart of SPY, the ETF that correlates to the S&P 500. So, you can see, even though we did touch 1100 which is 110 on SPY the real range was 1120 right here these lows up to about 1170 so we're we're in a 50 point range here for those three days and we made a brief foray above it but you can see the market was turned away around the 1200 level, previous level of support, now turning into a resistance, which is overall a bearish sign. And then we got a really bearish gap down all the way from about 1190 down to 1170 on the S&P. So after rallying out of this range, we came right back down into it and here we are again bouncing off of 1120 so for the bulls this 1120 level has become a clearly defined area of support that they've defended now on numerous occasions so that's kind of our line in the sand in the near term as we approach a potentially market moving event like this Friday. If 1120 breaks, we would expect a retest of 1100. And if we break below that, we could trade down to 1050 and possibly even lower. We'll point out how we're getting that target in a moment. But first, let's talk about the upside potential. You can see we've got this gap down here, which is a very wide gap down. It's about a, a almost a 25-30 point gap um, between 11.65 and 11.93, so 28 point gap just about. So just like if you notice the market was able to rally to this gap before fading out, we think there is a possibility that the market can breach above 1170, break above 1170, and potentially rally all the way back up to 1195. But beyond that, it gets more complicated. We expect there to be a good amount of supply in this range right here from these buyers up here who got stuck and are trapped and as well from the buyers down here who are going to be looking to take profits on a nice you know five to eight percent bounce in the market furthermore we have some pretty serious trend line resistance coming into play if you connect the lows from late july excuse me the highs from late july you can see we've got a clearly defined downtrend here on the 60 minute chart we weren't even able to break above it Furthermore, if you want to get rid of all these here, you can see that this trend line carries the same slope as this bounce right here that occurred on August 15th through the 
17. And now you can see that the S&P is attempting to break back into this channel. But there's really a lot of work to be done. We would not be changing our bearish tone unless we see the S&P break above this channel, which if we extend the chart in the coming days, that's going to be around 12.10, 12.06, pretty much right in line with these highs from that latest bounce, which got up to about 12.08, I believe. So that's a 60-minute chart. And one other thing we want to point out, look at the volume here. Look at the really big volume during this flush out. And look how weak the volume was bouncing. Once again, high volume during this flush out. And we'll have to see how the volume is as we go higher, if we go higher. But that's a really key thing to watch and monitor is the overall trading volume. Because right now on this bounce that we had recently, it was more about a lack of supply as opposed to a lack of demand. And once the supply picked back up as it did late last week, it was very easy for the market to give up all of its gains from the bounce. So now let's look at a daily chart. You can see what we mean even more. High volume on the downturn, low volume on the bounce, high volume on the downturn, low volume here again on this bounce. So, a real lack of conviction. Now, let's talk about what our target might be and why if we're to break 1100 on the S&P. You can see here we've got our defined low from two weeks ago, that 1100 level, 1101 was the exact level, if you want to put an exact number on it. Now, what did that bounce save us from? Well, if you look at what happened in 2010, 1100 was kind of a pivot point of sorts. When the market broke below it, it usually traded back down towards 1120. When it was able to break above it, it was able to get back up towards 1200. So we've got this channel here that dates back from the late 2009 highs as well as the March 2010 lows, which occurred last summer, pretty much a year ago. And so if we break 1100, what that's going to mean is we'll be re-entering this channel and we'll be having to do a retest. And we would likely have to bottom out somewhere between this channel, which we have between 1010 and 1100. A very wide range, 90 point range. So should be open to the thought that we could trade all the way back down to 1010. Personally, we think it'll be somewhere in the middle range, middle end range. 1050 or so. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Below 1010, although we don't foresee that happening, we would then be looking at a move to this area of price congestion from the 2009 lows, which would be around 950. So 950 to 1000 on the S&P. But in the meantime, 1120 to 1170 is our range. We've got resistance between 1200 and 1210 on the upside, and we've got support between 1120 and 1130 now that's been established. So if we break 1120, we expect to test 1100. If we break 1100, we expect to move lower towards 1050. That doesn't mean we expect a straight shot to 1050, but it does mean we would expect 1085, 1075 on down with the mindset that we need to bottom out around 1050 and we would then reevaluate once we got there. One other thing I wanted to point out, 
if you look at the financial sector as represented by XLF, it's very heavily weighted in the market and it's really becoming an albatross on the overall markets. You can see it's broken down below its 2010 lows the financial sector has and it is testing the top of a base from 2009 attempting to find support not having very much success xlf though could be a key tell you want to watch that 1080 to 1150 level on xlf we're seeing a lot of banks look like they could be coming back to their 2009 lows which is very bearish bank of america for example at around six bucks is only three dollars removed from its uh, 2009 low of three dollars even JP Morgan which many consider to be one of the strongest banks is has broken to a new two-year low looks like it might have to come down towards thirty dollars Goldman Sachs another real ugly one is down around a hundred two-year lows Citibank, same thing, two-year lows. Wells Fargo, two-year lows. So we're seeing broad weakness in the financial sector, which we think is a bad omen of the overall marketplace and a potential sign of things to come. Lastly, we like to focus on the Russell 2000 index because it's a small cap index, so it can kind of give you a parameter of risk appetite amongst big money. The Russell is in a bear market officially from the high of 868 that it put in in May to the low of 650, six, um, 650. Most recently it's declined over 20% so that's a bear market by definition. You can see on the rally attempt it couldn't even get back above 700. So once again, we think this could prove as a, a bad omen of sorts for the overall market. So there you have it. Feel free to email any questions you may have. Stock Pacific specific, we'd be more than happy to review an individual stock for you and give you our take on the technicals. That email address is info at stockhaven.com. Thank you.